Hey there, it's Modern Retro Tech, and today we will be talking about compression algorithm uh, called Huffman coding, and we will implement it in Rust. We will be using Rayon to parallelize some of our computations, and uh, we will use a couple of other crates that will help us to efficiently store data. And in the end of the video, we will compare the performance of our solution against ZIP and see how realistic using something like that is in the real world. Huffman coding is an algorithm that finds an optimal prefix code. Now, what does that mean? Prefix code is an encoding in which there's no code words that are prefixes of other code words. In other words, this allows you to build variable size encoding and you can safely write it out and read it without storing lengths of each code because no code will be a prefix of another code. What does optimal mean? Optimal means that the sum of code lengths multiplied by each token's probability is less than for any other token-based code. To summarize, Huffman coding creates a variable length compression code that is optimal with respect to length of coded tokens relative to their frequency. Frequent tokens will take less bits. To better understand Huffman coding, let's look at an example. Here we can see that we have four possible symbols, A, B, C, and D, and they appear in our files that we want to compress with different probabilities. So A is the most frequent, it appears in 40% of cases, and D is the least frequent, it appears only in 5% of cases. Now, what Huffman coding algorithm will do, it will build a tree that will look like that. And you can see that this is a binary tree. So each node has at most two children. We start from a root and we can trace a path from the root of the tree to any of the leaves and each leaf of the tree is a token on this path, depending if we turn left to right, we can write 0 or 1, which will produce a prefix for this token. For example, if we try to encode A, we will go from the root left and we will immediately arrive at the leaf for A. So the code for A is 0. If we will try to encode D, we will need to go from the root right, so it will be 1. Then we need to turn left, that will be 0. And then we will need to turn left once more, which will be zero. So the prefix code for D will be one zero zero. Uh, we can repeat the same operations for B and C. And if we take any sequence of those tokens, we can now convert them to a corresponding code. If you want to decode it, we can just use the same tree to trace our paths uh, to corresponding tokens. What is interesting here is that the size of this representation is less than the original representation. Since we only have four options, it means that each token can be decoded in two bits. Our string is eight tokens long. So to encode it, we will need to use 16 bits. But if we use Huffman encoding, we will only need 14 bits to encode this. That's how compression is achieved. Of course, tracing the tree is not the most optimal option most of the time. So normally you would try to create a hash map so you can map each token to its corresponding prefix and you can create a reverse hash map which will map prefixes to tokens and that's what you will actually use for encoding and decoding but you can only get those maps if you build the tree first. So how do we do that? First, we make each token a leaf node. Then we continuously repeat the following step. We select two nodes with the lowest probability, add them as children of a new intermediary node, set that node's probability to the sum of the children's probabilities. We repeat this step until we only have one node remaining and this node naturally will be the root of our tree. Then we need to extract a hash map that we will use for encoding. We will start from the root and we will walk the tree recording the prefixes uh, of each leaf. So for example, if we go first right, uh, taking one to BCD, and then we go left to CD, and then we go left again to D, we get one, zero, zero, and this is our prefix code. Naturally, turns 
to the left by convention are the same as zero and turns to the right are the same as one. And now we can start coding that in Rust. Um, first of all, of course, we will need to start with the data structure for the tree. It will be an enumeration and we will have two variants in the tree enum. Leaf is a leaf node with the token. Um, the type of the token is generic, it's T. And we also store the frequency for this token. For simplicity, we will not try to normalize frequencies. So this will be just an unsigned integer. Second variant in the tree enum is node. Node will also have frequency because remember we need to sum frequencies of the children um, to build nodes. And the node will have left and right children. Now let's look how a little snippet of our tree example tree will be represented in this case for convenience and for us to be able to write tests. I also said that several accessor methods, pretty much all those functions look like the frequency function you can see here. To efficiently select the lowest probabilities nodes, we will need to use a heap. Rust's standard library already provides a binary heap. So you need to be able to compare nodes between each other. So we will need to implement uh, ordering and partial ordering for our tree type. Binary heap that Rust implements in the standard library by default will allow you to select the maximum nodes and we need to select the minimum nodes. But thankfully, Rust standard library also provides us with a handy data structure called reverse um, that you can use to wrap whatever you have to reverse ordering. So if instead of adding our leaves and nodes to binary heap without reverse, we will add them with reverse, it will mean that our binary heap will work as a mean heap, which is what we need here. Let's look at the core algorithm now. We implement this function, we accept the type of tokens as a generic parameter, and we take a frequencies map for our tokens. We create an empty heap and we put all of those um, tokens as leaves in this heap using reverse to make sure that we will first fetch the least frequent tokens from the heap. And then as long as we have more than one element remaining in the heap, we will select two nodes with the lowest frequency from the heap. Um, we create a merge node where we will add frequencies of the children together and we will set those nodes that we selected as left and right children of the merge node. And then we will push it back into the heap. In the end, after we only have the root node remaining in the heap, we pop it out of the heap and we return it. Now, I mentioned that we will need to get frequencies of the tokens to actually build the tree. So here you can see an example how we can do it and how we can do it in parallel as well. Here we accept lines, which is a vector of strings, and we calculate word frequency in this case. So each token is word, so we will return a hash map from strings to U64. Naturally, you can implement similar methods for all kinds of tokens. They don't necessarily need to be strings. Now we can finally create an encoder. This is a hash map from tokens to bitvec. Create named bitvec as well and it allows you to efficiently store vectors of bits. And in our case, our encoding works on the level of bits. So you need to be able to somehow store them directly. You can, of course, express them as u eights, but then you probably will not achieve any compression because you will waste a lot of space. Bitvec solves this problem. It allows you to work with a collection of individual bits pretty much the same way as you would work with um, a normal vector. To create this hash map, we will need to walk the tree that we generated. Um, and to walk a tree, you have two broad choices normally. You can either use recursion or you can use stack and we will use stack. First, we will start with putting the root node uh, together with an empty bit vector. We will use bit vectors to, of course, trace the path to each node on our stack. And then as long as stack is not empty, as long, in other words, as long as we have more stuff to explore in the tree, we pop the first element from the stack, we create variables node and pass from that uh, popped element, and we match node. If it's a leaf, then we know that we found some token and we now should have a full pass to this token. So we insert this token as a key and this pass as a value in the encoder map. 
if we encounter an intermediary node, then we know that we need to walk both left and right children. For example, for the left child, we copy our pass. We add one zero bit here. We need to write false. That's the API of the bit vec, but think about it as zero. We add it to the pass and then we push the left child together with this left pass on the stack. And we do the same thing for the right pass. And in the end, once we finished working the tree, we return the results in encoder hash map. Function to encoder will essentially take us from the tree on the left to the hash map on the right. And to decode whatever we compress back in a readable format, we will need to essentially reverse the hash map. Now we need to figure out how we will actually serialize our data structure. So far, everything is all happened in memory, but we, of course, would want to write something to disk. We will just use Serda. I will be using message pack with the beautiful RMP library that provides message pack encoding. In any case, the particular encoding format here is not that um, relevant. You can select something else, for example, bin code, as long as it doesn't add too much overhead, we still should achieve compression. Of course, we will need to write our lines. We will represent them as vector of bitvex, each line encoded using our Huffman coding. And we also need to remember which tokens were mapped to which vector. So we also add in encoder hash map from tokens to bit vector. Of course, you can use decoder hash map here instead, which will mean that decoding will be a bit faster, but encoding will be a bit slower because you will need to transform your hash map. And now we are ready to write our compress function. I wanted to try two approaches with this algorithm. I wanted to try to encode our file using words, individual words as tokens, and I wanted to try encoding stuff using individual characters as tokens. We will need to accept two closures. And that makes the signature of that function somewhat scary. But let's take it step by step. And of course, remember, I did not come up with this signature from the top of my head. In fact, I was just allowed compiler to guide me to write it. And whenever you write something like that, uh, compiler will tell you, oh, you forgot this trade bound here, or you need to add lifetime parameter there. As long as you follow its instructions, you usually will be able to write such signatures without much thought. In any case, we will start with uh, a reference to our lines vector. And then we have two closures, get frequencies and line to tokens. Get frequencies is responsible for extracting frequencies from lines. Uh, for example, like the word frequencies functions that we saw before. Line to tokens is a function that allows us to split individual lines to tokens. Whole compress function will return a result. And in case we succeeded, we will get a vector of bytes, something that we can then write to a file or send over network. We need to provide trade bounds for all of those generic parameters. And now we have quite a few of them. We have T for our token type, we have frequencies F for our get frequencies closure, we get token extractor for line to tokens closure. We also need to introduce a lifetime. This is a requirement here because we have too many references and compiler needs a bit of our help figuring out how long each of those lives. Our tokens need to be cloned, that need to be able to be compared, they should be able to be stored as keys in a hash map. They also should be thread safe. We will also use Rayon here to speed up our compression a bit. We also will need to be able to serialize our tokens. For our frequencies closure, just accept immutable reference to line and we return a hash map of frequency of the tokens. Token extractor takes reference to a string and returns an iterator over tokens that also should be thread safe. Uh, now, the body of this function is way simpler than its signature. First, we get frequencies of our tokens by calling the get frequencies closure on our lines. Then, we call our Huffman tree function on the reference of frequencies to build the Huffman tree. Then, we convert it to a hash map with to encoder function. And then, for each line using parallel iterator, we map to its binary encoding. For that, we split line and tokens using line to tokens closure. Then, we map each token to its encoded version, which will be a bit vector. And then, we join all those bit vectors together. In the end, we collect all of that into 
a vector. Now we create the compressed data structure, which contains our encoder and our data, and we use RMP serda to convert it to a, the encoded representation of our data. Now we can compress the data, but how do we extract the data? We only expect to get a reference to a vector of bytes um, as our data, and we also accept a closure, which is called tokens to line, because now we need to do the reverse transformation. We need to take tokens, and we need to somehow merge them to be one line. And this function will return uh, a result, and if everything goes well, this result will be an OK of vector of strings, which is our lines. Now we just use RMP serda library to decode our bytes to compress data struct. Then we call our encoder to decoder function to convert our encoder that we stored in the file to a decoder hash map that we can use to extract tokens from the prefix codes. And then we again use uh, rayon, parallelize our execution. We convert our data vector to parallel iterator. And for each of those lines, we create a new vector of tokens, um, and then we essentially try to match our token progressively reading bit by bit from the line. We push each bit into a candidate bit vector, um, and then we check if this candidate is contained in the decoder uh, hash map. It means that we read a token, and we can push it into, into our tokens vector. Remember, Huffman's coding provides us with prefix codes, which means no code will be a prefix of another code. So whenever we found a match in the decoder struct, we know that we found a token. We don't need to care about storing lengths. And we, of course, after pushing the new token, we need to drop all the stuff from our candidate because now we start to read uh, next prefix. And um, if we didn't get a match from the decoder, then we just don't do anything. After reading all, all the bits in the line, we convert this to the actual string um, by using tokens to line closure, calling it on the vector of tokens. And of course, to compute those lines, we collect and we return it uh, as OK lines. And now we are done. Uh, this is a very simplified version of our main function. You can check the repositories that I will link with the actual implementation because it uses Clap to provide some command line arguments and niceties like tracking time, for example, for each step. But on a very high level, we read our file to a string, we split it into lines, we then call our compress function. We then create a file for our compressed representation where we write compressed data. And to decompress, we read the compressed data file and we just call our extract function with passing the closure for joining our tokens into it. So let's run it. We will be using a Wikipedia dump, English Wikipedia dump for this example. You can find instructions on getting this data in the repository as well. It's just from Kaggle, uh, one of the open data sets. It's about 900 megabytes large. You can see that our interface has compress um, and extract arguments, and we can select between words and chars. We can see that we are using our course very efficiently when we run it. We can now see that our compression was successful because instead of almost 900 megabytes, we arrived at 373 megabytes. But of course, we can use the same utility to extract. And again, we can see that Rayon helped us speed up some stuff. Now, to verify that our compression doesn't lose any data, we can run it on those files. And you can see that nothing is returned from the div we can be sure that our files are identical. Apart from that, I also looked at um, using chars mode, and I also compared it with zip uh, using standard settings without any modifications. And surprisingly enough, our compression rate is quite close when we use the words mode. But of course, our algorithm is very, very basic and not production ready. We didn't put much thought yet into optimizing it. Compression time in our case is also faster because it seems that by default Zip doesn't try to scale across multiple cores. However, Zip outperforms us on 
extraction time. If you look at chars encoding, you can see that we don't achieve nearly as good compression rate, even though our compression time is very, very fast and our extraction time is also quite fast. So you can see that depending on the choice of your tokens, you can achieve different compression, you can achieve different compression and extraction times. So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to write a comment. And I have a bit of news. Um, recently, I started providing consulting services and they have a new website. So please don't hesitate to check it out. I also have a blog there, which I will try to update from time to time. And of course, if you or the company you work for requires consulting services for anything related to Rust, Elixir, web development, distributed programming, or data stuff, there is a contact form on the website through which you can easily reach me.